mean, Donald Trump has a 25 or 30 point lead. Ron DeSantis is in solid second place at about 20, 21 percent. He's getting a lot of great reviews with a lot of followers, a lot of people showing up, a lot of people listening. If the election were today and if it were between uh, President Biden and former President Trump, that Trump would win 45 to 40 percent, a 5 percent margin. A new poll finds that all of the presidential candidates from both parties, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's seeking the Democratic nomination, has the highest favorability rating of 47 percent and the lowest unfavorability rating of 26 percent. By contrast, President Biden is at only 39 percent favorability and 53 percent unfavorability. My popularity is greater than by, you know, by, I think, 20 points and any other political candidate. So somehow the American people are hearing what I'm saying. I don't know whether it's through the podcast or through social media. Uh, my unfavorability ratings should be off the charts if people believe. I mean, listen, if I believe the stuff that's written about me in the papers and reported about me on the mainstream news sites, I would not have anything. I would definitely not vote for me. So as Mr. Kennedy just asked, who's really the front runner here? And is the media missing the mark as it did with the rise of Donald Trump seven years ago? We're joined now by Centerpoint contributor and former Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown. Senator, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you, sir. Uh, it's great to be on. OK, so you understand what it's like to be a political outsider. We saw that with the rise of your Senate win in 2010. Do you think that pollsters and the media are just completely missing the mark here? Well, I think it's certainly changed uh, since the old days where you just have a house phone and you pick it up and you, you actually get somebody. People are so much on the go right now, between, and they have cell phones, they're dealing in the new social media trends, and it's difficult, I think, to get some really accurate readings. But yeah, I, I, I was not surprised by the results of uh, J RFK Jr. and those, those really favorable, unfavorable numbers. And I definitely wasn't surprised with Joe Biden's. Everybody knows that, you know, 74% of the people in the country think we're going in the wrong direction. But uh, yeah, listen, I think there is a, a factor of them being out of touch and respectfully not giving someone like RFK Jr. his fair share. It's definitely a grassroots uh, situation going on. You just go on the social media platforms and he's getting a lot of great reviews with a lot of followers, a lot of people showing up, a lot of people listening. You know, this does seem like a messaging war at this point. Do you feel like the media has an invested interest into almost going against RFK Jr. because they're afraid for some reason that he may take some of the votes for Biden, which would mean potentially a win for President Trump? Well, he's certainly going to take votes from Joe Biden. Remember, those blue dog Democrats uh, have nowhere to go. For those uh, watching and listening, uh, that means the conservative Democrats who were once there and Respectfully, once again, uh, JFK would not be uh, welcome in the Democratic Party today. So, yes, he's absolutely going to take some of those conservative Democrats because they don't have a home. Uh, that being said, yes, uh, when you compare uh, RFK Jr. lifting weights and doing push-ups and actually talking, you know, for, for hours sometimes about an issue that he's very passionate about versus Joe Biden wandering off and, you know, not knowing where he's going, it's, it's disturbing. And world leaders look at this, certainly. Uh, the American people look at this. And yeah, he's going to definitely take votes. And you have, as I mentioned earlier, you have Cornell West and the Green Party. You know, is he going to take enough votes to have an effect? Yeah, every vote is going to be counted. It's going to be really close, as we noticed from the last election, in which it, it was really close in many, many states. And that's how I think it's probably going to be again at this point. What does this Harvard-Harris poll tell us at the end of the day? Because when you have somebody that the media is trying to tell us isn't really doing that great, isn't going to make have any momentum, yet we're seeing that everyone loves him. He has the most favorability out of anybody, either side. It doesn't seem like Americans are really buying what the media is selling them. Well, if I were the media and I was running those, I'd, I'd send somebody right to his house, wh whatever. I'd put him right on camera and just grill him like they grill President Trump. And President Trump battles on a daily basis like they do with all the Republican candidates. When's the last time you saw anybody grill a Joe Biden without Jill actually stepping in and, and kind of answering the questions for him? And the questions are, sir, what's your favorite ice cream? Are you kidding me? So listen, he's battling, he's doing it the grassroots way. He is going to be a factor. Do I think he's going to win? 
I don't think he's going to win, but I certainly think he's going to be a force because he's raising money. He's got that grassroots army. And if you remember, uh, it was about a month ago, I reported that uh, there were a tremendous crowd in, in New Hampshire. And he's the only one on the ballot. Remember, Joe Biden has blown off New Hampshire uh, because he doesn't, he and the, his leaders don't respect the first in the nation primary state. So RFK will win New Hampshire. And what does that mean? Well, you get that first win. If you get that confidence, you get that mojo going. And then you take that around the country, he may have some legs. And we'll, we'll soon find out. You know, I want to mention something else that Harvard Harris po poll pointed out. It said if the election were today and if it we were between uh, President Biden and former President Trump, that Trump would win 45 to 40 percent, a 5 percent margin. That's pretty big. How much can we trust that poll? Yeah, listen, you're going to see polls. Uh, I'm not a big poll believer. As I referenced, I was down 40, what, 41 points and won by seven or eight. Uh, it's too early. Uh, as I referenced earlier, uh, we're in the middle of the summer. We finally had a good weekend here in New Hampshire. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and people are out in droves. They're not focusing on politics, I can assure you of that. So I think you need to wait till the fall and more polling coming out. And you have the people crisscrossing places like New Hampshire and Iowa, the early primary states. Uh, listen, no doubt, President Trump is a force, no doubt. But what I'm hearing is people saying, you know what, do we want to keep focusing if President Trump gets elected uh, for the things that are happening right now, the indictments, a lot of the hearings that uh, if the Democrats are in charge will absolutely happen, or do we want to get someone new who's going to move forward in a clean slate to try to solve the issues that affect people most? And I wrote them down. Obviously, the economy, inflation, the border, and, and, and the fentanyl issues. And then you throw in China and, and, and people's individual rights. That's what people are talking about wherever I go. You mentioned the numbers and how they're shaping up right now. Donald Trump is in a fine position right now, literally doubling his closest competitor in most of the polls that we're seeing, uh, Ron DeSantis. Uh, but it's still so early. What, what's your take on, on the general polling in the Republican primaries? Yeah, I mean, it is early, but this race has been remarkably stable. I mean, if you think back to, you know, 2016, the last time we had an open Republican primary, there were just uh, there were five or six or seven candidates that were all within five points of each other. I mean, it was really wide open and people were sort of bouncing around uh, until Iowa, basically. Um, this is different. I mean, Donald Trump has a 25 or 30 point lead. Ron DeSantis is in solid second place at about 20, 21 percent. And then there's everybody else. It really is. A, you know, I call it a one and a half man race at this point. It's not even quite a two man race. The problem for DeSantis is he's been campaigning now for weeks and he hasn't been able to move the numbers in his direction at all not nationally and not really in any of these early states. Um, where the movement is happening, uh, which is a, a bit surprising, is at the bottom. You've got, uh, you know, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is now, has overtaken Nikki Haley. And if the trends continue, will overtake Mike Pence and be, a thir be in third place uh, in the Republican primary here in the next couple of weeks. He's seen some real upward movement while the other candidates have lost ground. So, again, it doesn't really change the overall dynamic, but it is interesting that that a guy like Ramaswamy uh, has been able to to connect with voters really and and make some progress uh, and and vault ahead of some uh, you know some bigger name challengers.